So we can go ahead and hit apply for this and now we have just told the system that there is a microphone coming in here called mic one and it's got this channel number mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's live stereo. Cool. Let's uh, think. Now we also brought in the um, uh, the CD player. Mm -hmm. and we brought that into uh, input number two actually. So let's uh, swipe that. I'm sorry, that was uh, that's mic two. Input number two is actually right, going to be right there. Yeah, it's actually in the third input um, down. Uh, if you count the mics as the first one and two. Okay. So this is going to be CD number one. So go ahead and enter that. CD one, okay. And the channel number is just fine. Uh, live stereo is fine. I don't think we need any, any gain plus or minus. It's a professional CD player, so uh, unity gain should be good for that. Okay. Um, let's see, we brought the iPod in also, didn't we? So yeah. that was on um, the, uh, the next input, which would be the input number four. So let's uh, go ahead and put an iPod. Oh good, you made a little eye there, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, live, you know what, the iPod is gonna need some gain. Let's turn that up. Um, I think the max gain available here is 12 dB on a line level input. So 12, type in, okay. yeah, type in 12. Um, yeah, you can add the .0 if, if you want to. Does it matter? Um, you know, if you don't put it in there, then it'll just say 12, which is oh, fine. Okay. Um, and hit apply. So now, okay, these sources are named and these sources are being advertised throughout the Axia network, which right now is just the power station. But if mm -hmm. we added more devices to the network, these names would all be advertised. Now, let's see, we did hook up an output. Mm -hmm. So uh, scroll down just a bit on the whole page and go to, there it is, destinations, it's and click nice. on destinations. Now, okay. these are the physical outputs on the back of the power station. We plug those speakers into um, output number five. Okay. So go to output number five, there you go. And you can name this if you want to, just mm -hmm. to keep, kind of keep track of it. So let's just call it uh, CR speakers, CR for control room, and then uh, speakers. Okay. Now, here's the, uh, here's the tricky part. We've got to feed something to these speakers. Mm -hmm. Well, channel five, that's just arbitrary. That's how it came from the factory. See that drop down box there? Uh -huh. Yeah, click that. Okay. Whoa, we've just opened a box that shows every source on the network. This is any source that's been added within the last 10 seconds, because mm -hmm. it takes that long to propagate the names of sources throughout the network. And uh, you can see, uh, oh, look up there at the top. There's mic one that we added. Yep. There's CD one we added. There's iPod that we added. All right, look down there, yeah, where it says program one, that mm -hmm. would be the program output from the console. Okay. But that's not what we want for the speakers, because that would be you know, not affected by the volume control. Mm -hmm. So look a little farther down, the control room monitor. That's what we want. The control room monitor is an output from the mix engine that's inside the uh, power station. So you see that, yeah, that link right there? Click mm -hmm. that. Click it, okay. And look, you've just assigned control room monitor to come out that hole where cool. we have the speakers plugged in. Yeah. Now, we've got to remember to hit apply. Oh, we could apply some gain if we needed, you know, output gain. We could give it some negative gain or positive gain if you need to change that a bit. We also have a choice here about the, uh, what, about the, what we're feeding, if it's mm -hmm. uh, high impedance or 600 ohm, or if it's a semi-pro thing that, me that needs uh, minus 10 uh, dBV, we could select one of those. So high Z is fine. Cool. Let's hit apply, and we have just assigned the control room monitor feed from inside the power station to the speakers. So while Rachel is finishing up her configuration of the console, the inputs and the outputs and the fader assignments, let me tell you about the IP audio driver. You know, if you've got a piece of equipment like a computer that already has a network interface card and an operating system, you can install the Axia IP audio driver. Now, the IP driver is installed in this laptop and it's making Windows think that it has four more sound cards. That's right. Windows thinks it has four more physical sound cards. Really, they're virtual sound cards. And we can tell iTunes or whatever program we're playing audio with to use those sound cards to play the audio out. Then we just take an Ethernet cable, and this is not going to contain audio, this is going to contain Ethernet. The Ethernet goes to the switch on the back of the power station. We'll plug that in, and now this laptop is connected to the power station, audio and remote control, without using any other wires or any other sound card other than just Ethernet. This is one of the real beauties about Axia IP Audio. It saves you a lot of money and a lot of wiring and frustration. Go up to the element surface, Yep, uh, where it says sources and profiles. You got it, we're mm -hmm. gonna define some sources. So click on source profiles. And now, oh look, see there's no source profile. So the console itself, even though we've got some devices on the network that are defined like mm -hmm. CD and iPod and mic, 
nothing, nothing has been defined for use in the console yet. So let's click New Source Profile, and oh my gosh, got a whole bunch of uh, things to choose from here. Yep. The primary source, now this is on the network, what it is. Let's define the CD1, so go up, that's it, let's define the mic. Okay, go click on mic. So now we have just assigned source number 5001, the mic. And you see the next frame down there, the mm -hmm. next field? Whatever we type in there is what's going to show up on the console for a, for a friendly name. So you could type in DJ Mike or host or mic one. Uh, I don't know. How about host? Okay. Yeah, okay. that works. Yeah, host. Now, a couple more things we need to set. Um, we could leave everything pretty much as it is mm -hmm. uh, by their defaults, but I like to remove sources from the control room monitor inputs and studio monitor input. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to deselect those. Basically, this is showing where can we assign that mic. We can assign it to any channel we want to. We're going to assign it to just one of them, probably channel one, because that's where people tend to like their mic. But we can assign it to any channel we want to. Oh, the source type. That's important. We want that, um, that light to come on and the speakers to mute when we turn the mic on. Mm -hmm. So let's make it an operator mic. Yeah, let's click on that. That's good. So anything that's an operator mic or a control room producer, control room guest, if any of those mics are on, it'll mute the control room speakers when we select those things. Okay. All right, scroll on down. Um, there are a lot of functions here that can be used for all kinds of cool things like automatic mix minus. Um, we can also get uh, EQ. And also, we can get uh, compression. We can set all that kind of thing up right here in this. Let's save the changes. Okay. So now we've defined the host mic. So now we have these four different things defined. So now, Rachel, we have to define a show. We have to assign these sources that are now available uh, in the console to a show so we can actually do a show. So click on Show Profiles. Okay. And you see we have the default one, and we have one that's called Nada, which uh, brings up nothing on the console. <laughs> Let's hit New Source, uh, show, New Show Profile. Okay. All right. We can give it a name. How about uh, Show Demo? That works. All right. Now, uh, we want the mic to appear on Channel 1. That's kind of standard, so click on, you got it, Channel 1. Source ID. Yeah. Now, oh, look, these are not everything on the network. These are the friendly names of the things that we've assigned to be available on the console. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, click on Host. And uh, there's a lot of options here. Let me see if any of them are really particularly critical to us. We could override the EQ and the, the processing settings. Ah, so you see these program assignments? Assign to program one, assign to program two. Uh -huh. Let's turn those on. Okay. Just so it makes all the buttons light. It puts the, it assigns that this fader uh, into all these different program buses. No, you don't need to do aux A. That's okay. Yeah, I think that's enough for now. Scroll on down and um, let's, uh, yeah, let's save that. There's all kinds of cool options in there. All right, let's do, um, let's do, oh, you know what? We didn't save that. Yeah, that profile name. See, type that again. Show demo. Good job. All right, let's save that. Okay, now we got show demo. See, oh yeah, it showed up over there on the left. Oh, okay. All right, let's see if channel one saved. Yep, it did. Okay, we can go back to show demo. Okay. Yay, we've just defined a show and the next thing for us to do is to go load that show on the console itself. Okay. Come on. So we're all done configuring the console. The sources are defined. It's defined what channels they'll show up on. And Rachel, we're ready to make the thing play. Now, right now, the console has nothing on it because we don't have a profile loaded. So let's load a profile, the one you were working on, show demo. Press the profile button right there. Okay. It brings up a list of the possible profiles. Scroll down to show demo. Okay. And now push the button. There you go. And hit profile again to return to the normal screen. And look, on the console we have host, that's the microphone, CD1, laptop, and iPod. Hey, remember, when we, we fixed it so when you turn the microphone on, it makes the on-air light come on, right? Yes. Okay, well, we'll turn on the on-air the microphone and look, the on-air light comes on. That's so cool. All right, we'll warn everybody that we're on the air. Let's see if the CD player works. We wired the audio in, okay. we defined it, and we defined the GPIO. So here, I'll fade it up. And okay. you do the honors. Go ahead and start the CD player. Push play. You ready? Yeah. Ah! All right. Ah! Yeah, we got a console. Cool. Very good. I did it. We also have laptop audio from this little laptop over here with the IP audio driver that I showed you. And we have a place where the iPod can come in as well. That's just audio, no remote control on the iPod. So we got the console configured. We're done. And yeah. hey, we did it in under our budget time, too. Woo! All right. <laughs> 
So are you ready to configure your own power station, your own IP audio studio? Well, this book will really help you get started. It's Introduction to Livewire. Now, this book is available on the Axia Audio website. You can download the entire PDF if you like, or you can give us a call. We'll be glad to send you one, and we ship one of these with all Axia systems, so you can get hold of it that way, too. Hey, Rachel, thanks very much for your help putting this whole thing together. Well, thank you. I appreciate it very much, and you have fun putting together your Axia IP Audio Studio.